Okay, uh, we're up to question three now on the June uh, 2010 BY1 paper. Uh, this question's uh, about enzymes. Okay, and uh, I want to read through the uh, the passage here and uh, highlight some important uh, uh, parts of the question. Uh, so the graph shows the mass of product. So let's underline that the mass of product formed. Okay, that's important to to note when a fixed concentration of enzyme is added to a fixed concentration of substrate and then placed in water baths at three different temperatures. Now everything I've underlined there I think are important points uh, to consider when you're when you're first reading uh, this question. Okay, um, so what I would say at the moment before we go any further is that this question is very much about the effect of temperature on the activity of an enzyme okay and uh, you can see the temperatures used as 60 37 and 25 okay so um, one other aspect here um, is why is the examiner stating fixed concentration of enzyme fixed concentration of substrate uh, well I think it's probably to do with him controlling his variables okay uh, it's an experiment looking at the effect of temperature and if that's what you're investigating, then you need to keep everything else um, constant. All right, so uh, he's just controlled his uh, variables by uh, doing that. Uh, the other interesting aspect of this graph, okay, I don't know what you've done in uh, college or school, but very often the y-axis of graphs you draw and consider when you're looking at enzyme uh, work often have rate along the y and uh, along the X, uh, they normally ha either have enzyme concentration, substrate concentration, or uh, temperature. Okay, but the examiner here has put mass of product along the Y, and uh, along the uh, X there is actually time. Okay, now there's nothing unusual about that. This is uh, uh, an acceptable and standard way of uh, drawing these graphs. Okay, it's just that... Uh, your interpretation of them uh, is slightly different um, uh, because there's mass of product rather than rate. Okay, um, in uh, in one of my other video tutorials, I've uh, considered really enzyme uh, graphs in a lot of detail, and uh, I've sort of explained uh, what you can do with these types of graph where you don't have rate along the y, but you have either a product formed or um, substrate used perhaps uh, against time. Uh, these these graphs basically you can actually calculate rate uh, from these graphs but uh, uh, that uh, that's out of the scope of this uh, uh, exam uh, technique uh, video. Okay uh, so let's scroll down now to uh, the question and uh, see what the examiner wants. So he's asking you to explain all right, why the mass of product formed at 60 degrees is greater during the first five minutes than the mass is formed at 25 and 37. Okay, so instantly now you know to, for, for this question, you're only interested in the first five minutes on the graph. Everything else you can ignore for this part uh, A1. All right. So uh, the examiner is telling you there's greater products formed at 60 degrees uh, instead of 25 and 37. So let's uh, let's scroll up. Let's um, put a line on that graph. Uh, roughly, I think there is about five minutes. OK, so if I draw a line up. OK, so basically you can see um, from that graph that indeed during the first five minutes there is far far more product formed at 60 degrees than there is at uh, any other temperature okay so uh, uh, why is the 60 degree temperature producing uh, far more um, product than uh, the other temperatures okay uh, before we answer that uh, if I just point out again that um, the gradient okay on uh, these lines uh, represents uh, the fact that there's far more 
uh, product being formed the gradient there of the 60 degree line okay uh, is is quite vertical actually so it does show that there's quite a lot of uh, product being formed um, in a in a short space of time okay uh, the gradient of the 37 degree line is a lot shallower so that signifies that again during this first five minutes um, the amount of product being formed um, is a lot slower okay because remember now we're measuring mass of product in a given time and as I said earlier we, we can actually calculate rate from that but uh, that's beyond the scope of this video um, so uh, why does uh, the 60 degree create more product we're not interested here in how fast the product is made uh, that's not what the question is after is asking why does it create more product in the first five minutes well this is examining you on the effect of temperature on enzyme activity okay so you should be able to write quite a bit uh, about this okay so um basically what's happening then is at 60 degrees okay uh, the temperature is higher obviously than 25 and 37 degrees and that means the enzyme and its substrate have more kinetic energy okay um, they move around more because of their greater kinetic energy and that creates a situation where um, the substrate and the enzyme will collide more frequently and you will get more successful collisions and that's a really key thing to remember um, successful collisions uh, it's often mentioned in mark schemes this more successful collisions what does it mean well it means this a successful collision between an enzyme and a substrate is when the substrate enters the active site it's only when the substrate enters the active site will the enzyme catalyze the reaction and therefore you'll get a product okay um, so that's what's happening um, here more kinetic energy more successful collisions um, that means more product being formed now the other way you can express um, more successful collisions is actually um, to state that there are more enzyme substrate complexes being formed okay those two statements mean uh, uh, the same thing uh, really okay so you've got more enzyme substrate complexes being formed and therefore you actually get more product uh, being formed okay um, so there's my answer uh, what I've mentioned is at higher temperatures uh, the enzyme and substrate have more kinetic energy this allows more successful collisions to occur between the enzyme and substrate so producing more enzyme substrate uh, complexes okay and then lastly this will uh, produce more product all right so it's important to mention that higher temperatures there because that's what the examiner is really asking you about why is there more product formed at 60 degrees rather than 25 or 37 okay so I've hit all the key points there um, I've definitely got the three marks I've been thorough I've shown the examiner I know the effect of temperature on enzyme activity I've told him I know more enzyme substrate complexes can form because there's more kinetic energy and therefore you get more product okay then um, let's move on to part two um, explain why there is less overall product formed at 60 degrees C than at 37 degrees C so in this question now the examiner is not um, restricting you to a particular time period on the graph he's now restricting you to certain temperatures all right so for this question we only need to consider the 60 degree and the 37 degree lines on uh, the graph uh, we can ignore the 25 degree line for this part of the question um, so he's asking why there's less overall product forms so let's uh, let's scroll up a minute and see what he's on about there um, is there less overall product formed well if we look at the 37 degree line you can see that um, 
eventually about, uh, let's mark this up, at about, it's about uh, 15 minutes in, I think, something like that. At about 15 minutes in, the, the amount or mass of product formed at 37 degrees C actually exceeds that at 60, and it exceeds it by... Uh, by a fair amount there all right so if I draw uh, a line there that black line uh, you can see that um, the uh, the uh, product uh, is actually a, a greater at 37 there okay um, so the examiner now wants to know why at 37 degrees C there's this far greater product uh, of ma mass of product uh, formed. Okay, to answer this, I think I need to highlight uh, an important point here, um, in case you haven't realised this. Um, of course, each each temperature line here represents an individual experiment, obviously. So um, these are separate experiments. Um, they have to be because they're at different temperatures. Um, so. The thing you should be clicking on here is, well, why why is the mass of product formed by the uh, experiment at 60 degrees C? Why is it levelling off? Because um, what you've got is a, is a rather, as I've said earlier, a rather rapid reaction to start with. Okay, because that gradient of the line is is very steep so what it's saying is at 60 degrees C there's there's a rather rapid reaction initially and then the amount of product formed is sort of leveled off and it doesn't change for the rest of the experiment okay uh, with the 37 degrees C then the line is uh, less steep so the amount of product formed isn't uh, be informed as quick as at 30 as at 60 degrees but what's happening is that the the enzyme seems to be producing product for a longer period of time all right so all we're interested in really is uh, if I uh, mark it off we're interested in this part of the line here this uh, this vertical section here that part of the line shows that there is product being formed. Okay. Uh, after that, along this plateaued part, um, the actual amount of product being formed um, levels off. So what we can see, hopefully, is that for the 37 degrees C, even though the product being formed is a lot slower, i.e. the reaction rate is slower, which is logical because it's a, a lower temperature. So that would make sense. If there's a, a lower temperature, there's less kinetic energy. Uh, so the product is being formed slower. All right. But the actual product, the amount of product formed is greater compared to the 60 degrees C. All right. And that's shown by that. Uh, if you look at the uh, mouse cursor, shown by that uh, that line there going all the way up past the line of the 60 degrees C and further and further up okay so why do we get more overall product being formed at 37 degrees C compared to 60 uh, the answer is to do with the enzyme at 60 degrees C becoming denatured okay uh, you're not uh, told where these enzymes come from, okay? You're not told what enzymes they are, all right? But 60 degrees C is, is pretty high. And um, what I would do, unless you're told specifically the optimum temperature of an enzyme or if you're told what organism the enzyme comes from, um, if, if you're not told any of that, I would assume that this are or these are human enzymes okay and human enzymes work best at around 37 to 40 uh, degrees C all right so if we work on that basis um, 60 degrees C is well above the optimum temperature of a human enzyme 
all right? Uh, so what is happening for the 60 degree uh, experiment is um, eventually the enzyme is becoming denatured, okay? So after about uh, five minutes, okay, uh, which is about there, after about five minutes, uh, the enzyme is is uh, is becoming denatured, and therefore uh, the amount of product being formed is a lot less. Okay, whereas at 37 degrees C, uh, the temperature is lower, so the enzyme is not being denatured, so it can actually carry on catalyzing the reaction um, for a lot longer. Okay. Okay, I've actually. Uh, mentioned quite a lot there um, I hope you follow that um, so to be a bit more concise now uh, basically what's happening is at uh, 60 degrees C um, initially the enzyme is 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 catalyzing the reaction uh, rapidly okay but then you start to get the denaturing of the enzyme okay when it denatures um, you then have the enzyme being unable to catalyze um, the reaction okay so the actual product being formed uh, levels off because um, you don't have the enzymes there to catalyze the reaction okay so uh, that's the answer I've decided to put in um, I think um, I have fully explained uh, what's going on I've said at 60 degrees C the enzyme reacts rapidly but then begins to be denatured at around five minutes. Okay. When denatured, the enzyme can no longer catalyze the reaction, so there is less product being formed. All right. Uh, now I've uh, tackled the 37 degrees C line. I've said at 37 degrees the enzyme is catalyzing the reaction at a slower rate. Okay but produces product for a longer period of time compared to the enzyme at 60 degrees C. And I think that that fully describes why there's more product being formed at 60 compared to 37. Uh, at the end of the question, I will uh, show you the mark scheme. And uh, I just want to point out a couple of things with the marking points uh, for this particular part uh, of the question. Okay then, moving on to part B, um, it's asking you to explain why the mass of product formed at 37 degrees C levels off at approximately uh, 20 minutes. Okay, so let's let's scroll back up to this uh, this graph and uh, have a look at that. Um, yeah, okay, um, the line does level off at around about 20 minutes. If I uh, just draw a line up. Okay, it's starting to level off indeed at around 20 minutes. Uh, so why is it happening? Okay, now we really, really have to be careful here. Okay, because um, the reason why it's plateauing off or leveling off is not the same reason as to why the 60 degree line is plateauing or leveling off. It's very different. Okay, so I want to try and rem uh, refresh your memory on what I said earlier about assuming that these enzymes are human enzymes because you're not given any other information about the enzymes. Okay, so basically um, we've said earlier that at 60 degrees the enzyme is being denatured and that's why it's plateauing off. Now we cannot say that for the 37 degree uh, line because 37 degrees C is the good right temperature for human enzymes. So the fact that it's starting to plateau off at around 20 minutes is not due to it being denatured. There's another reason, okay? Um, and basically that reason is that the uh, uh, substrate has been converted to product. There's pretty much no more substrate left. All right. Now I want to scroll up to the original uh, part of the question and just highlight again this um, fixed concentration of substrate. That, as I mentioned earlier, I said that the examiner 
or the experimenter was sort of controlling his variables here, which is true. But there's also another important I, um, thing to remember about having a fixed concentration of substrate. If you've only got a set amount of substrate at the start of, a, of the reaction, eventually that substrate is going to run out. It's going to be converted to product. All right. Uh, so that's why it's vital to follow through a question and highlight and understand all these key points. OK, so if you'd forgotten about that fixed concentration of substrate, you may have found yourself in a bit of bother uh, with this and you may have gone down the line of saying, oh, after 20 minutes, the, the 37 degree uh, enzyme there has been denatured, which is wrong. OK. Um, so the answer to um, part B there is purely and simply uh, all the substrate has been converted to uh, to its product. And there you go. Uh, not much more to be said about uh, part B there. OK, um, part C is the uh, is the last section of uh, question three. Um, now we're being asked to explain why the curve at 25 degrees C has not leveled off after 60 minutes. All right. So now we're only interested in uh, the 25 degree uh, line. Uh, so if I just scroll back up, just to remind you what that line looks like, there it is. It's the line with the, uh, uh, the, the lowest gradient, OK, uh, the least steep gradient. And what seems to be happening is uh, the reaction there is continuing all the way along up to uh, 60 minutes. So that line has not um, uh, leveled off, it's not plateaued off. OK, uh, what's the reason for that? Well, it's got to do with the temperature at which this enzyme uh, is being subjected to. 25 degrees C is a low temperature. It's it's about room temperature, approximately. Now, I know room temperature can change depending on various conditions, but um, standard normal room temperature then is often quoted as 25 degrees C. All right. Um, so what's going on? Well, it's all to do with the effect of the low temperature. OK, so it's basically more or less opposite to what we've said about high temperatures. At high temperatures, we've said there's high kinetic energy, there's more successful collisions and, and so on. But at 25 degrees C, there's less kinetic energy. There's less successful collisions. There's less or fewer enzyme substrate complexes uh, being formed. OK, so basically after or up to 60 minutes, because the reaction is a lot slower, because there's less uh, product being formed, there's actually still substrate left. All right, so the reaction can continue because it hasn't, because the, 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 the enzyme is, is working at such a lower rate. Um, it hasn't at this point converted all the substrate to product. All right, so um, uh, you can actually have the reaction continuing then after 60 minutes. OK, so let's uh, let's scroll back down to uh, part C and uh, we'll type an answer in. OK, then, so uh, I've put in there that at lower temperatures, the enzyme and substrate have less kinetic energy. So there will be less uh, successful collisions between the enzyme and substrate. So there's less enzyme substrate complexes uh, being formed. All right. This means that there would be less product being formed. So there are still substrate molecules present after 60 minutes. OK, uh, so that's why the curve hasn't leveled off um, after 60 minutes. The, uh, the enzyme still has substrate in which it can convert to product. OK, um, Let's uh, let's have a quick look at the uh, the marking scheme for this um, question. Okay, there's uh, the answer to uh, A1. Okay, uh, I haven't got a problem with that at all. I think that's that's fine. Um, what I've got a problem with really is the 
the marking points for uh, a part two. All right. I don't think the examiner has been particularly fair there. I think the the marking points are a bit restrictive. Okay. Um, if you rewind this uh, rewind this video and look at my answer to part two, I think I've done um, far more uh, better answer than what the mark scheme uh, is actually crediting people for. Okay. Um, you will find this in mark schemes that. Um, um, sometimes uh, the examiner, in my opinion, hasn't put in um, uh, enough marking points or enough of the relevant marking points as well. Okay, that's just one of the things with uh, with exams, I'm afraid. Okay, so I think my answer to part two is a lot thorough uh, than what the the mark scheme is is showing there. Okay, part B then uh, and C, I think. Are, are fine uh, no no problems really with that okay uh, that's the end then of question three